Call to order, City of Cannon Falls, City Council meeting for Tuesday, May 7th, 2024. If I could get a roll call, please. Jeff Gesby. Here. Grohl. Here. Jepson, he is absent. Johnson. Here. Cronenberger. Here. Lundell. Here. Montgomery. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I could get a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Second. Motion from Groat, second from Diane. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Uh, public input. Public input is intended to afford the public an opportunity to address concerns to the City Council. The public input will be no longer than 30 minutes, or 30 minutes in total length, and each speaker will have no more than three minutes to speak. Speakers may address topics relevant to the governance of the city. Speakers must sign up in advance and must provide their name, address, and the topic they intend to address. Comments must be on topic, respectful, pertinent to the city business, and adhere to the applicable data privacy rules. Any speaker that violates these rules will be asked to sit down. If the speaker refuses to comply, they may be removed from the meeting. Speakers shall not address topics that are the subject of a public hearing. All such comments shall be made at the public hearing. The City Council will not generally act on issues raised by the public input, but may choose to schedule consideration of the item on a future agenda. Babel Gorman, speed sign. Um, normally we don't take information. Is it, are we clear with this? We, well, the agenda has to be ahead of time, so this information we should have before this, too. Yeah. So, anyway, this should, should probably be taken up at a police commission meeting, but you do not allow public input. And I know for years uh, that was where the public conversed with the police department, but that's no longer the case. But back in, like, 2017, John Eltoff brought up about this speed sign. Yes, the one that's sitting out here. It's been sitting out here for like eight months. It was on the agenda back in the late teens several times. It was even brought up and I gave you some information in 2019 and Jeff McCormick talked about a couple locations and it's all there. And I'm sure some would wonder, why does Babe care about a speed sign? Well, Babe's got a lead foot for one thing, and the other thing is, I'm wondering why you folks don't care that it's not up. <clears throat> it's been sitting there for eight months. Derek, you were on the co uh, police commission, as was Steve, back in 2019. Wendy Rober, the police commission chairman, went to the county and got the sheriff to go to the county commissioners and donate this thing to the city of Cannon Falls. They went as far as to bring it here and deliver it, apparently in working order. I've asked several people several times, and they continually bring up reasons why it's not being used. Like I say, it's been sitting there for eight months. I'm wondering how long it's going to take to get it operational and get it up. Um, I would think that Wendy Rober and the county commissioner and sheriff and you folks would be a little disappointed that it's taken this long should be rather simple i was working in northfield today i know i saw at least five of them and i don't know they're in all kinds of cities near here i hear randolph gives them have one the latest excuse is that there's a problem with the battery well i've had a lot of machinery in my day i've got a battery problem i go to napa Mike tells me it's junk or it's good, charge it or get a new one. Pretty simple. It's been seven years. I just wonder how much longer it's going to take to get it up and running. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Moving forward, tonight we have a proclamation and recognition for our uh, police department. So I'll start off by reading the proclamation for National Police Week 2024. 
Whereas there are approximately 800,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the City of Cannon Falls Police Department. Whereas nearly 58,170 assaults against law enforcement officers are reported in 2019, resulting in approximately 15,000 injuries. Whereas since the first recorded death in 1786, more than 24,067 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and have been killed or died in the line of duty. Whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. Whereas 282 new names of fallen heroes are being added to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial this spring, including 118 officers killed in 2023 and 164 officers killed in previous years. Whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty will be honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 34th Annual Candlelight Vigil on the evening of May 13, 2024. Whereas the Candlelight Vigil on May 13, 2024 is part of National Police Week, which will take place this year, May 10th to the 16th, 2024. Whereas May 15th, 2024 was designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of fallen officers and their families, and U.S. flags are to be flown at half staff. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Cannon Falls City Council formally designates May 10th to the 16th, 2024, as Police Week in Cannon Falls and publicly salutes the service of law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation. This needs to be uh, uh, action from the council. <coughs> we could uh, approve and adopt that it will be the proclamation for National Police Week 2024. So moved. So have a motion by Diane, second from Steve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Thank you, Council. And thank you to all of our law enforcement officers that are here tonight. Uh, Police Chief McCormick will handle the recognition and awards. Thank you, Mayor and Council. One of the things that we try to do during Police Week is recognize our officers for service and actions that they've taken. Um, and this evening, we're going to recognize three of our officers. Officer Michael Truax, Officer Nathaniel Fox, and Officer Tyler Johnson. And so we're going to start off with Officer Truax and Officer Fox because they were involved in the same incident. Uh, that incident was on April 23rd, 2024. Officer Truax and Fox were dispatched to an overdose on the north side of Cannon Falls. When officers arrived, the victim was unconscious and blue in color. A relative had started doing CPR and had given Narcan to the victims. Officer Truax took over CPR and Officer Fox started uh, the AED process and administering oxygen to the victim and was preparing to deliver another dose of Narcan. The victim began breathing on their own and Cannon Falls Ambulance and Rescue arrived and care was turned over to them. Because of their actions, um, they were able to save a life that evening. And for that, if those two officers would come up. Officer Truax, yours is on top, so I'm going to present yours first. Congratulations. Officer Fox, also congratulations. Thank you again for the job you do for our community. Officer Tyler Johnson will be next. On February 24th, 2023, Officer Tyler Johnson was dispatched to check the welfare of a resident on the north side of Cannon Falls after they told someone that they were going to take fentanyl pills to harm themselves. When he arrived, the victim was found on the floor unconscious and blue in color. Officer Johnson started CPR and continued assisting with CPR once the Cannon Falls ambulance arrived. The victim was transported to the hospital and survived. And so, Officer Johnson, if you would come. Because of his actions, another person's life was saved. I want to thank the council for giving us this time to recognize the officers. Uh, these are just two, or one award that they're receiving, but on a daily basis, they're continuing to serve our community day in and day out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Something I want to say to Chief? 
I might need it. If something doesn't work, it wasn't working. <laughs> Thank you again to all the law enforcement officers that are here. Uh, moving on, public hearing for resolution 2751. Uh, certifying unpaid utility charges that will be collected via taxes. So the first thing I will do is open up that public hearing if anybody would like to speak on that. Public hearing is open. Second call for speaking. Third and final call for speaking in the public hearing. Seeing nobody take the podium, we will officially close the public hearing and Council, if we can get a motion to approve resolution 2751 certifying unpaid utility charges to be collected by taxes. Motion by Lindell. Second. Second by Johnson. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. That brings us to the consent agenda tonight. Consent agenda items may be adopted under one motion as presented or may be removed for discussion and resolution as council business. I'll read through them. Item A, just and correct claims for the accounting period that ended on April 30, 2024. <coughs> Item B, meeting minutes for April 16, 2024 City Council meeting. Item C, approve the hiring of the 2024 pool employees. Item D, resolution 2752, uh, authorizing creation and use of the extreme risk protection order fund. Item E, resolution 2753, authorizing acceptance of a monetary donation $8,344 by the Henkel Foundation. Item F, approve the spelling change and replacement of park sign for Miniisca Park. Item G, approve the crack ceiling quote. And item H, resolution 2754, acceptance of $50,000 grant from the Minnesota DNR for the 2023 to 2027 Shade Tree Bonding Grant Program. Is there anything that the council would like to pull down? Hearing none. Oh, I'm sorry. G and H, and just comments on them, or should we do that now? Uh, do you need them down for discussion, or you just have something to say? Uh, question on one, and just comment on the other. Let's pull them down. We'll pull them down just because we don't have anything. So G and H will become uh, council business A and B. All right. Anything else from the council? Hearing none, uh, I take a motion to approve our consent agenda. Motion from Gesme. Second. Second from Grote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Theories. Brings us to council business. Item A, approve the crack ceiling quote. Diane. And I have no problem with the quote and the fact that we're doing it. I think it's great. Um, I just, again, want to emphasize that I think we need to be more proactive in looking at all of our streets that need to be repaired. Um, behind the post office and up past the Catholic Church is a mess. And I, I agree that cracks the only where we can to preserve the life of the roads, but um, I, I keep hearing that we're not gonna be doing many road projects because we don't have enough money. We're never gonna have enough money to do what we need to do, and we have to do it. Um, or else we're gonna have a city where half the streets aren't crumbling. Like that's, and I, I'm assuming that would come up in a budget workshop or something. But. Anything else before we, any, any further discussion on the uh, approve the crack ceiling quote? I'll Here move you. to approve. Okay, motion from Diane. Do I have a second? Second from Lundell. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries. Gets us to item B, the resolution uh, 2754 acceptance of the $50,000 grant from the Minnesota DNR. And that was just a question. All right, is this something that people who lose their trees can apply to the city to get this, or are you going to just figure out where they go? So, this uh, council gave us uh, permission to apply for this grant back in uh, on September 19th, 2023. Um, we were awarded $50,000, and in the grant, it is a uh, for every tree that we take down, we have to replace, but it's for city property. Okay. So this will be mainly used for the trees that we have to um, hire out to have taken down, the ones under power lines and whatnot that we, our guys can't do. So, but for every tree that they take out um, under a power line, you know, in the boulevard, we'll plant another tree in a park. So, Thank and then we have a three-year program to maintain that tree and make sure it grows. So. All right. Any other questions or discussion? 
Hearing none, I would accept a motion to approve resolution 2754. So moved. Motion from Diane. Second. Second from Lisa. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That carries. Gets us two reports. Chamber of Commerce, Maggie, if you'd like to fill us in. <coughs> Good evening. Um, a couple updates here from the chamber. First, tomorrow is the walk bike to school event. Um, so there'll be a group of students that are gathering at the city gazebo. They're gonna be leaving at 720 to be walking and biking to school. So keep an eye out for them as you guys are on your way to work tomorrow. And if you see them, we encourage you to pop out and say hi and um, give the kids a wave. And on that topic, the city of Cannon Falls was awarded an active transportation grant earlier this year. Uh, Laura Qualley is kind of heading this. Um, there's a committee that is made up of some community members. I'm included in that. And tomorrow, Laura and some of that committee will be participating in the walk and talking with family, community members, kids, teachers about some concerns or some ideas that they might have. Um, but they are doing an active transportation summit June 25th and 26th in Cannon Falls. Um, and that'll just give us an opportunity to kind of audit the biking, walking, concerns and needs in the community. Um, if anybody wants to be a part of that, you can let myself or Laura know. Um, these flyers I will be handing out to different businesses around town. There's contact information on there, and then there's a really neat interactive map. Um, and I'll put this on the Chamber website and Facebook page also so people can access it. Um, but there's an interactive map where you can actually put like a little person or a little bike at certain spots that you think have certain needs or we could take a look at. So keep an eye out for that. Um, tomorrow also is the Chamber breakfast so that is here at city hall that is for our chamber members but we encourage anybody to come um, it's ten dollars per person it's if you're not a member of the chamber it's a good time to get to know chamber members and kind of have a get a feel for what the chamber does tomorrow's speaker is cole langstorff with langstorff law um, he's going to be speaking on business law and this weekend is really busy around town so just wanted to give everybody a heads up we have the citywide garage sales the ads will be um, in the weekend and on facebook Tomorrow through the weekend are four retailers. So El Tafts, Swanabauer, La Boutique Unique, Cannon Valley Specialties are doing another shop around town event. Um, you pick up a card, get it stamped, and you're eligible to win $300 worth of prizes. The winery has a girls' day event on Saturday. The library has a craft fair. VFW has Yeti Bingo. Um, there's, I think the Bears even have a game on Sunday, I believe. All of this is on the community calendar, which I would encourage everybody to check that out and spread the word to. We're trying to get that community or that calendar rolling and people aware of it. So all that's on our website. We also updated the Chamber website to make it more, um, more user-friendly and to try to get to when people are trying to figure out what to do in Cannon Falls. So we've got some eat, stay, play, shop buttons that are quick and easy to find. So hopefully people have an idea of all the things there are to do in town. And then just a couple save the dates. June 13th is our first fun fest of the season. That's a Thursday night. Um, we've got vendors, music, food trucks. Cannonbells is sponsoring a butter carving contest. They did this a couple years ago. They're bringing it back. So each contestant gets a pound of butter and then you carve it. Um, they're looking for a lot of participants. So any, anybody can participate. Um, we're gonna work on getting registration up for that shortly. And then just the other save the date is the Chamber Golf Tournament, which is June 24th. And that is the Chamber's biggest fundraiser for the year. That's where we um, raise a lot of our money for Deck the Falls Fireworks, Fun Fest, um, Trick or Treat Trot, things like that. So it's $500 for a team of four. That includes lunch and dinner, um, green fees, two golf carts. So if you're interested in that, and then you can also be a whole sponsor, and then you can um, provide raffle prizes as well. So that's everything that I have. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Joint Powers Trail Board. Did we meet? We did. Didn't? Okay. All right. Uh, the EDA met on May 2nd. Uh, the majority of that meeting was talking about uh, terms to have a developer purchasing multiple lots and part of the state. So that was the majority of that. That was going to be our basic financial work. Uh, It'll come before the. It'll come before the council. For the terms of that. Probably at our next meeting, or I know that the calendar. Laura had it all figured out, but yeah. it should be our next meeting. The EDA will do a public hearing. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. The day. Before. That's right. 
Yep, so it'll be on our agenda. It'll come through the council. Uh, Public Works and Park Board also met on the second. Uh, most of it was on the um, consent agenda. The only thing that isn't is that um, student tree service, well, actually, there were two tree services that came in talking about their uh, willing, or, well, they want us to talk about what we can work, how we can work with them to be able to dump local work at the dump. So they, you know, if I have them cut down my tree, why can't they drop that tree off? Um, they're not asking for, you know, handouts, but, you know, when they do work in town, it would just be easier. And so anyways, we said that we were open to discussion. So we understand it's the citizens. I mean, it is the community that they're helping. I mean, they're paying, but, and they're willing to pay. save this for discussion when it's yeah, up. No, yeah, no, I'm perfect. just letting just, you know it's oh, coming. Yeah, yeah. No, it's coming. Thank you. Oh, thank you. It'll come to a, uh, we're going to talk about it again next month at Public Works, and then, because my suggestion to Public Works was, because they said just throw it back to City Council, I'm like, no, 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 we need to come up with an idea, and then take that to City Council, or do a work session, which is fine, yeah. but, <laughs> Regardless of what we do, I'd love to see your signs down there. Those uh, plywood and, you know, hand you don't like and those? No. It's got a touch that, uh, I think that our signs in the parks are so nice. Uh, and they look fantastic. And then we've got, you know, a little cheap particle board that's blocking in the breeze. And so apparently they're Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. It, it's the mini That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, all right. We'll around the horn, Jed. Anything? Um, just we got several construction <laughs> projects around town. Uh, Fitzgerald's over here on Cannon and Third. Um, they closed down the bridge this last week, and they're they were digging today to start laying new water and sewer main. Um, looks like Al Albrightson's are going to start sometime around the 20th now. I thought it was supposed to be sooner than that, but it's been pushed back. So, um, and then I think 72nd Avenue is on the their scheduled start after. They've done all the removals up on uh, Timber Ridge, and I think there's some grading that needs to be done. And all that. So that's all I got. Thank you, Jed. Chief. So uh, maybe you might want to note this. The state speed enforcement is kicking off and run from now through September 2nd. Uh, it's part of the Towards Zero Death efforts, uh, and uh, our agency, along with uh, many others, participated in that, that program goal is to try to reduce the number of traffic deaths uh, through either through speed, uh, impaired driving, distracted driving, that type of stuff. So you're going to see um, notices in uh, uh, newspapers, on the TV, uh, about that effort or as we go through the summer. There's going to be some concentrated efforts on roadways that connect across the state. So from Wisconsin to uh, the Dakotas, uh, Highway 19 would be one of them. 30 I believe is another one uh, where they're going to do certain details on uh, one day statewide across the uh, uh, the road or the highway so just reminding people speed limits are speed limits please follow them uh, and we we'll arrive there safe and uh, everybody can, uh, can enjoy the summertime that's all I have thanks chief Sarah Neil just uh, a comment or two um, Diane mentioned about uh, some additional street work on the budget. I actually sent out the, the department heads budgets today, um, so we are beginning that process. And we'll be chatting about uh, um, how that's going to work through the, the next couple, three months. Um, I did mention to them uh, about the four to five percent, keep it right in that range. Um, you know, we're still fighting that inflation with capital equipment, and, and uh, you just look at the fire department was at the finance meeting and you know they're just shaking their heads uh, what they're going to do with uh, the cost of their equipment and but it, I think we're going to have to just incrementally raise this 
capital fund up because you just can't put a hundred thousand dollars in in that fund and then expect the citizens to like that right that's that's that don't work so um, you know we did a, we've done a lot in the last four or five years to uh, get these things to work there's a lot of work to left um, as an example uh, when I first got here uh, the year before you didn't have a dollar in a mill and overlay fund now you're putting in two two and a quarter two hundred two hundred twenty five thousand a year um, that gets you a lot of work done like Diane mentioned there's a there's streets that um, are in tough shape but we got to be careful on which ones we work on because the underground may be needing replacement first and uh, um, you look out at Sarah's uh, department or neighborhood all that underground's got to get replaced um, hence why there and you Lisa you're next <laughs> you two are gonna fight for who's next right <laughs> no <Thanks. laughs> but anyhow um, when the underground um, needs to be replaced we don't put too much money in the, in the asphalt and yeah it does look tough but you put a couple hundred thousand dollars in it and then tear it up in five years that's hard to Sewer and water. Yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, just uh, beware, we'll schedule a work session. Uh, once I get it back, I told the department heads to bring them back by uh, the end of May. Sometime in June, we'll get it all put together for you guys and, and get started again. Seems like we just got done with it. It does, yeah. So, all right. Thank you. Laura. Good. Lisa. Eric. Well, yours is falling. You got to pull it up because that button. Oh, there you go. It's not. Yours is sinking in, so that button is way down there. Okay. There you go. There you go. Oh. Okay, that's Diane's time. Button, <laughs> <laughs> button. No, I, I was just going to say, uh, congratulations to all of our students. Uh, you know, over eighty-five thousand dollars worth of scholarships given out. Thank you to all the local donors, organizations, individual business. And just, you know, to hold up our entire student body, you know, from the littlest ones to the graduating seniors, where um, I go in to do book clubs <laughs> where you read with the first graders. And when you walk in, you know, other old classes are coming up, and they're all smiling and wavy. And I think, you know, congratulations uh, to our staff on doing such a great job and to our kids for being wonderful. Steve, uh, just one more shout out to all our police department. These guys that, that you don't really hear what they do behind the scenes until they're recognized by the chief. There's a lot going on that we don't know about or hear about until something like this happens. What a shout out to a lot of our young guys who haven't been here for a long time showing us the right now. Um, last week, Thursday, was the 73rd Annual National Day of Prayer. Uh, I got to speak at the event that was at St. Anne's Gerson, Diane, and Diane, there she was on St. Anne's uh, I think that's an interesting event. I'm glad to take part in that, to, to be welcoming to all the different faiths here in the community. So, uh, and then, yeah, the uh, award ceremony was, I think, last week, Wednesday. Bears season opener was Sunday at JVP, and uh, people are baseball fans. The first half of the season is loaded with home games because construction starts on the 17th, and they will be gone from that point on. So, uh, yeah, summer is going to go super quick at John Birch Park, basically the month of June, and that's all you get. So, uh, with that, I would accept a motion to adjourn. Oh, Jeff. Right. He was the first one. You were now. I, 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 is that your motion to adjourn? That is your motion. Second, motion to adjourn. second from Diane. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.